Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. How you doing today? Great, good. Just a friendly reminder that Redneck Preppy is also available on Odyssey and Rumble. There are links in the description below. We got a book review on tap today, and we're going to look at Ian McCollum's latest Small Arms of World War II, United States of America. It's the first of a planned series, which will also cover nations like Britain, Italy, Germany, and the Soviet Union. This thing comes in at $98 US, and it weighs in with 500 pages. So the premise of the book and the series as a whole is to survey the weapons that a nation used during the Second World War. To that end, McCollum and photographer James Rupley explore, in this case, America's many platforms. Now, most people, when they think of what the United States used, probably begin and end their list with the well-known stuff, your M1 Garands and your M1911s and everything in between. Of course, the United States, like every country, actually employed a crazy variety of weapons, some of it common to many soldiers, other things that might have been more boutique items or one-offs. Now, with this book, you're of course going to get the well-known stuff, but there are also some entries in here that many forget to include in their mental lists of World War II American firearms, but weapons that nonetheless contributed to many different theaters of war. Now, is this a soup to nuts enumeration of every small arm used by American forces during the Second World War? I'm sure that there's some prototype rifle that the same guy who killed the real Adolf Hitler and then a few decades later killed the Bigfoot used that isn't listed in this book. But I'm confident in saying that if your American serviceman had a chance to carry it, McCollum and Rupley included it here. At any rate, show don't tell, so let's actually take a look in the book so you can see what you're going to get if you end up buying this. Okay, getting into this, it is printed in China if that is a thing for you, and I can certainly understand if it is. Now, it is divided into six sections. Handguns, submachine guns, rifles, machine guns, and this covers both light and heavy. Shotguns and miscellaneous, which features two bazookas and the T-24, an experiment uh, which saw the Americans try and convert captured MG-42s to 30-06. A failed experiment, I might add. Not sure why that was worthy of being covered here since it you know, wasn't an issued weapon. And there are plenty of experimental designs that were equally interesting but that said, I wasn't offended by its inclusion either. Now, as you can see by my rather casual paging through this book, that the star of the show for a lot of people will be Rupley's photography. You can get your hands on a lot of American World War II weaponry and study it up close, but you probably can't get to all of it. So the ability to look at photography that has images oftentimes much larger than the actual item itself is invaluable for us gun geeks who, you know, won't be holding an MG42 submachine gun anytime soon. You get a real sense of the design and detail for each. Now, along with the photos, of course, McCollum provides some text which explains the genesis of a small arm, as well as some interesting tidbits about certain features or the history that are noteworthy. We're not talking about extensive written coverage here, however. The written word moves fast in this. You're getting a few paragraphs on each, then it's on to the next weapon. Let's take a look at one firearm. As an example of about what you're going to get for each entry, we'll take the M1918 BAR, the World War I version of that light machine gun, which I think most people agree was superior to the improved version that the United States Army used in the second. The book does, however, have an entry for both because they were both used in the Second World War. Now, most entries open up with a few paragraphs written by McCollum, and then you have some photography which really spotlights each of the firearms and forgive the glare from the lights it is kind of hard to capture this on camera uh, isn't that gorgeous like even with the glare here you can tell that this is an absolutely beautiful picture of course it's a beautiful subject so it's easy to probably take a good picture of it and then we wrap this up 
well, six page later uh, with some more pictures and some short paragraphs spotlighting some things that McCollum thinks are important. And that's like it. Uh, it's like I said earlier, this is not a reference book. Calling this a coffee table book, I think, is a fair label. All right, as with every review, I am contractually obligated to discuss the pros and cons of this book. We shall, in the grand tradition of this channel, begin with the cons. Now, after going through this book, it should be obvious, as I stated, that this is not a reference book. So if you were expecting that, it's obviously going to be a con for you. A proper reference book would, of course, be like 500 pages on a single firearm, not that total spread out over several dozen. That said, it's not being billed as a reference work, but I include that con here just so no one is surprised if they order this expecting like serial number tables for the rising M50. I will say that I wish there was more of McCollum's writing in this book. He is an endless font of entertaining information in his videos, and I really would have enjoyed more of his voice. It might have actually made more sense to split this into two volumes, and expand the writing while keeping Rupley's great photos, though I can understand if they came to the conclusion that even doubling the amount of writing wouldn't have tangibly added that much more to each weapon's narrative. Now, about the only other thing that I could mention is price. It comes in at US $98. This can get pretty expensive once you combine shipping, and if you're in Canada, when you add taxes and brokerage, oi. Europeans seem to be able to get copies, at least for now, shipped uh, from within the continent, so that'll probably save them some sticker shock. Is $98 for a book expensive? Uh, Head Stamp's a small publisher, so they don't have that scale of economy going for them, and the quality of the book is there, so I suppose that price is justified. Again, I only list it because I'm sure someone would bring it up in the comments. Now for the pros. If it wasn't obvious, I think the star of this book is easily Rupley's photography. In fact, if I was a wag, I'd say that this book should have his name above McCollum's. The large majority of the 500 pages that this weighs in with is the photography, with about a page, maybe a little bit more, of commentary for each firearm by McCollum. Now that's not to knock his writing. It takes a lot of skill to be both insightful and concise. But there's only so much you can say in that short of space. The photos, well, they speak for themselves, though. I think they did a good job representing the many arms carried by Americans during that war. I mean, sure, you could quibble and wonder why they didn't include hand grenades and bayonets and whatever else was strapped onto an American at some point. But then you either explode the book to an unmanageable size or you end up reducing the amount of coverage for each uh, a weapon to a single page or two. I'm sure there's also some crazy stuff that a commando unit used in a single mission that isn't here. I think that they struck a nice balance of the stuff that most people are going to be interested in. So, do I recommend Small Arms of World War II United States of America? If you know what you're going to get going into it and are happy with that prospect, I'd give it a thumbs up. It's not a reference book, so if you're expecting that, you're going to be gravely disappointed. This is a coffee table book with fantastic photography by Rupley and a short overview for each firearm by McCollum. If that's something that you're interested in, you could do much worse for such a thing. In the classic test of happiness, would I buy this again knowing what I got? Yes. Yes, I would. So if you're interested in obtaining a copy for yourself, you can head on over to Headstamp Publishing's website, and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to take your money. There is a non-affiliate link in the description below. At any rate, I hope you found today's video to at least be vaguely entertaining and mildly informative. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care, and bye-bye.